We are so thankful that you have made the choice to tune in for one of ACC's messages. You know, as you're listening and diving into the truths that are being shared, we challenge you. If you're sitting at your phone or at your computer, hop on social media and be sure to use the hashtag, you belong at ACC, as God is teaching you different things during this message. You belong at ACC and we truly mean that, which means that we would love to have you join us during one of our Sunday services at 710 Aqua Heart Road. We would love to have you jump into this message and we are believing God is going to do some awesome things in your life today. Well, good morning, ACC. How are you guys? All right. Hey, whether you are joining us here in the auditorium, online, or in the lounge, we just want to give you a warm warm welcome. In fact, for our first-time guests, can we just, can we, can we give them a welcome together? Listen, as we are coming into this, this, this time of Easter, we're going to be celebrating four services next week, just as they shared in the polls, but I want you to know something very clearly, okay? You guys, if you come to this service or the next one, I'm just telling you, if, if you bring somebody, that's fine, but if not, I don't know if there's going to be enough room here. Okay, so if you're one of those people who's like, hey, listen, I want to make certain that I've got enough elbow room, something like that, uh, we do always have the lounge, but we also will have a service on Saturday evening. Saturday, Saturday we're going to have a service, and, and it's going to be just like the three on Sunday morning, and so we're going to be celebrating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ all weekend. We hope that you will join us. We hope that you will bring friends and family, and let me tell you, this is what we in affectionately refer to in the church world as the Super Bowl. Christmas and Easter, it's the Super Bowl. This is why we celebrate the resurrection each and every single Sunday, every single day. So we want to invite you to that. Well, we're going to continue on. Um, I, I find it very interesting as far as, as we're going into Easter, the name of this uh, series, Stop Going to Church. <laughs> But it's important because we don't come to church, we are the church, okay? Oftentimes you'll hear people say, oh, it's good to be in the house of God. Well, on one level, this is a building that we refer to as the house of God, as a church. But at the end of the day, scripturally speaking, the people of God are the house of God. The people of God are the temple. The people of God are the church. So as we dive into this word Let's go to the Lord with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you asking that you would do exceedingly more than we could ever ask or imagine in accordance with your word, and asking that you would move us just a little bit closer to you this day. Father, that you would not only download your thoughts into our minds and our hearts, but Father, that you would also move us to action. We ask this in Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen, amen, amen. amen. You know, as we're talking today specifically about being the church, we're talking about serving as a church, serving one another, serving our community. One of the things that I thought about this week was a moment in time a number of years ago where I was part of a church and um, they gave us an opportunity to serve, which is something that we're going to give you the opportunity to at the end of the service. We're going to have a shorter message and then we'll go into that. We'll explain everything as that goes on, but... Many years ago, I remember signing up for something that had me very nervous sighted. You ever heard that word? Nervous and excited. Uh, I was going to be serving in children's ministry. Yeah. And I was not going it alone either. My friend Dave Christian, I was like, Dave, you know, we we basically said to each other, if you'll do it, I'll do it. Okay, I'm not going in this alone. So, and if that's you, you can always recruit your BFF, okay? Or a spouse or whatever. Anyway, so we went in and I'm here to say I survived, okay? I survived, I thrived. These kids were great. They, they did not destroy me or anything like that. And within the first couple of weeks, man, I just fell in love with that class. When you do children's ministry, after the first few weeks, they're like, oh, you're so awesome. And you're like, this is what I needed. This is exactly what I needed. But the truth of the matter is, when I went in there, I was a little uncomfortable. I was nervous sighted, as I said. 
And, you know, we all have these moments of discomfort. We all have these pitfalls that we can fall into. In fact, I've got a few pitfalls that I kind of have identified. The first one is, and yes, they're all with P, petrified. We don't know to move to the right, to the left. We're like, just, I don't know. The next one is pain. You might have had a little bit of church pain along the way, a little bit of church hurt. And there is a time of recovering, but that time doesn't go forever, okay? And this is just simply friendly fire. This is one of those things where, you know what? A well-meaning person, they may have done something not so well-meaning. Some of these are believers and some, they, they're, they're just growing. They just don't know what they don't know yet. And if that's you, if you're trying to figure out what you think about Jesus, this is a safe place to ask questions and we're glad you're here. But the next one is pride. This can be a pitfall. It can be, well, that's below me or that's out of my range. That's out of my reach. And that's just pride. Another one is playing. We've all been there at some point or another. We've probably played church. We went to church, but we weren't being the church, were we? Or certainly you've known people like that. The fifth pitfall this is one, this is, this is my personal favorite pitfall, okay? Procrastination. Why do today what I can put off till tomorrow, right? Eventually, when I have time, well, I got to tell you, that time's probably not going to come unless you make it a priority. See what I did there? So this morning, we're going to open up to 1 Chronicles chapter 28. Verse 20, if you don't have a Bible, um, feel free to look at the back of the chairs. There's a Bible right down there. That's our gift to you. Feel free to mark it up, write it up, read through it. It's wonderful. It will change your life. But we find that this is a point when King David, he's coming to the end of his life. And he is now, as it were, commissioning King David, or King Solomon, to build the temple. And he says this. He says, it says, Then David continued, be strong and courageous and do the work. Don't be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord God, my God, is with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. He will see to it that all the work related to the temple of the Lord is finished correctly. Now, some messages, it just seems like God, it just writes itself. And when I went through this, I saw seven things as far as for taking next steps, not just for King Solomon, but for everyone, for every one of us. I I love this. You just look at these seven encouraging directions to next steps. The first one is be strong and courageous. You're going to have to step out. It's going to take some courage. It doesn't mean that there's no fear. The second one is do the work. I had a friend years ago who would say, that's a great idea, John. When are you going to do it? Ideas are wonderful. I come up with a million-dollar idea almost every day. I am not a billionaire yet, nor a millionaire. So if you need some ideas. (laughs) In any case, um, you have to do the work. The rubber has got to meet the road. The third one is don't be afraid or discouraged. He says this, and I think it's important to connect not just that one, but all three of these to the next four because he makes it really clear why we can be strong, why we can be courageous, why we can do the work, and why we need not be afraid or discouraged. And in the midst of any project, anything that we do, there's going to be some discouragement along the way at some point or another. There's going to be times that we may be afraid or as I like to affectionately call it, nervous sighted. But David says this, God will be with you. God will not fail you. God will not forsake you. And God will work with you. I love that last line in verse 20. It says, he will see to it that all the work related to the temple of the Lord is finished correctly. He's not going to make you, he's not going to allow you to mess it up, is what I hear. And then he goes on. David says in 
verse 21, the various divisions of priests and Levites will serve in the temple of God. Others with skills or every kind will volunteer and the officials and the entire nation are at your command. Solomon, you're not going to do this on your own. You can't do it on your own. You're not meant to do it on your own. So I'm commissioning the nation and they're going to work together with you. Now, when we look in the Old Testament, this is written in Hebrew, and there's this word that we hear over and over again throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. In Hebrew, it's the word kadosh. We, we hear this word holy, and, the, and that's the Hebrew word kadosh. Can you say that with me? Kadosh. kadosh. Oh, you guys all know Hebrew. This is awesome. You're going to understand all of this. So, kadosh, while it is translated as holy, we serve a holy God. He is completely unique. He is completely separate. Another way that we can also translate this as, as set aside for a specific purpose. So, for example, I have a hammer. Now, I have bought a dozen different hammers, but what kind of, dudes, what kind of hammer is this? Who said ball hammer? This is not a ball hammer. It's a framing hammer. It's a framing hammer. You use this for building homes and things like that, okay? Now, a hammer, a hammer loves nails. Uh, to a hammer, everything looks like a nail too, right? But I have to tell you, now I went over to my neighbor's at one point and he was trying to put a gasket onto a, uh, a thermostat and he had stuff going all over the place. Now I had a solution for his problem, but he wouldn't have gotten very far. Instead, he needed something else. Now this one only does inch pounds, but uh, what is this? A torque wrench. That's right. It's not just any wrench. The difference on this one, this is great. You, can't, you can either over-tighten something and you'll have a problem, or you can under-tighten something. But with this, you can basically say, hey, this is how tough, this is how many pounds, how many inches on this one that I want this to go. And then when it goes that far, it makes a sound. And you know, I need to check this again, make sure. And now things are going to go as, as it is meant to be because this is a specific tool Set aside for a purpose. You, if you are in Christ, in fact, whether you're in Christ or not, you have been created for a specific purpose. But I will tell you, outside of Christ, you're never going to get to that purpose. Because when Jesus died on the cross, he died for our sins. He made us holy by his blood. And it is that Kadosh, that being set aside for a specific purpose because we have been made holy, that we are able to do what he's created us to do. I love how Peter, early follower of Jesus, says that. He says in 1 Peter 2 9, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a Kadosh nation, if it were Hebrew, but this is actually Greek. God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. David continues on in verse 29, verse 1. He says, it says, Then David turned to the entire assembly and said, My son Solomon, whom God has clearly chosen as the next king of Israel, is still young and experienced. Okay. In Hebrew, this would be the word ignorant. Okay. Okay. He just doesn't know what he doesn't know. He's about to step out into some new territory. And then it says, The work ahead of him is enormous, for the temple he will build is not for mere mortals. It is for the Lord God himself. We've all been ignorant at one point or another, right? We've all been a little green. And we didn't like hearing that at the time, but then we look back and you look back at your early 20s, and if you're in your 20s, you, can, you guys still know it all. But, but for us who have been there, we were a little green, weren't we? I love how Eugene Peterson puts this in the message. This is not just a place for people to meet each other, but a house for God to meet us. 
for us to meet God. And if you're in Christ, you are the temple today. You are the temple of God. The Holy Spirit, when we come to Christ, the Holy Spirit takes up residence within every single believer in Christ and indwells us with spiritual gifts as well to enable us to do what we can't do on our own, what we're not meant to do on our own. He does it with us and we do it alongside each other. Now, sometimes we may feel a little discouraged and that's where we need brothers and sisters in Christ. Sometimes we may not feel like we know what to do and that's why we need brothers and sisters in Christ. That's why God has also given us the Holy Spirit to enable us to do what we can't do on our own. But I love what uh, a church that was part of years ago, they would say it this way. Save people, serve people. Can you say that with me? Save people, serve people. Now, the way that we put it here at ACC is we say that we serve sacrificially. We have five catalysts. This is one of them. We serve sacrificially. Sacrificially, that means it's going to cost us something at some point or another. It's going to cause us some, some time. It's going to cause us to have to look at what are our priorities. It's going to cost us something. But here at ACC, we don't care how you serve, only that you serve sacrificially. We've been given a, a, you know, it's great to have a teacher. It's great to have somebody who can show us what does it look like to serve sacrificially. And as we come together each Sunday, you know, if you're here in the auditorium, there's a cross. This reminds us what sacrifice really looks like. It costs something. Now, we will not crucify you, okay? But this is basically showing what it looks like to pour ourselves out. And we're doing this in response to what God has already done. Now, I love what it says in Psalm 84.10. It says, better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. This is every doorkeeper's favorite verse or should be, right? Right? There's no insignificance here or there. Everything is significant. In fact, this reminds me of a a guy that I met more recently. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I love Facebook Marketplace. That's right. (laughs) Facebook Marketplace. It's my friend. And I've been amazed to see how the Lord has used these opportunities for meeting people. I've had the opportunity to share Jesus with people. I've had the opportunity to encourage brothers and sisters in Christ, oftentimes getting ready to move, helping them to connect with churches and such. But recently, I went to a guy's house and found out that he was newly married. And I made this, I I said, you know, God's word, the Bible, it says that he who has a wife, like God's going to bless them. Now, I said it in a way that, like, I didn't know if he believed or not, but basically just said, you know, God blesses those who, and in the midst of this, he goes, whoa, wait a minute. I have that verse on the inside of my ring. And he began to share about how he had kind of played church for many, many years. He who finds a wife finds favor with God. He said something changed in 2020. He said, I stopped playing church. I started actually being part of a small group ministry with other people. I started getting together with other guys and those guys, they told me, you got to stop living with your girlfriend. That's not God's desire for your life. They didn't feel comfortable at the time, I'm sure. But they spoke the truth to him in love. And then eventually he started serving as a greeter. And you, this guy, he was so excited. He's like, yes, I love greeting. But what you don't understand is I'm an introvert. I should not like this. But I love it. I love greeting people as they come into the church. I love being, and, and he stopped going to church. He started being the church. 
church. If you, call, if you count yourself as a follower of Jesus, we're called to be the church. We're called to serve one another in Christ. We're called to serve our community, to reach the nations with the gospel, to be a foretaste of the kingdom of God. We're called to serve. And there are many people here today who are. In fact, so often, we don't get an opportunity to say thank you for what you do. So I just want, if, if you have served sacrificially as part of ACC, if you're a partner if, or not a partner, but you are serving here and you have since December, could you do me a favor? Just stand up. Just stand up. Yeah. We really, truly do appreciate all that you do for the body of Christ here at ACC. God is doing something here at ACC. And it's going to take all of us to do it. Pastor Matt's going to come up in a moment. He's going to share the what now, God. But let me pray for you guys. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are a gracious God, a God of hope. A God who declares the end from the beginning and we have read to the end and you win. Because you win, we win. Father, I ask that you would help us to step out, to step out into new territory in faith, in hope, in love, in Jesus. And all God's people said, well, we are so thankful for the truth that was shared in this message today. Please know that we, as a church, are praying that what you have learned today, the truths that God has put deep into your heart, will manifest themselves and grow themselves into something amazing. And as always, you can experience that with other believers, other people who are walking this walk of faith at ACC on Sunday mornings. Please remember this. You belong at ACC.